Absolutely. Many of us experienced uh, sometimes rare occasional heart palpitations. Your heart skips a beat or flutters. But when it happens more frequently, it could mean something more like atrial fibrillation. Here to talk to us about this is Dr. Paris Bott, who has good news about a treatment for those living with atrial fibrillation. Welcome, doctor. Thank you for having me today. Uh, thank you for being here. So what is at atrial fibrillation and what are the risks? So atrial fibrillation is essentially a chaotic irregular rhythm of the upper chambers of the heart, otherwise known as the atria. And some of the symptoms people can feel with AFib include palpitations, fatigue, chest discomfort, lightheadedness, uh, and just feeling overall not well. Some of the risk factors that can predispose people to having AFib include high blood pressure, diabetes, um, increased weight. Uh, as we get older, we're at more risk for having AFib, thyroid disorder, um, and now, more and more people with sleep apnea are noted to have atrial fibrillation as well. The other issue with AFib is the risk of stroke that exists uh, with having atrial fibrillation. Patients with AFib are five times more likely to experience stroke, and it has been shown to be more debilitating with atrial fibrillation. All right, you've been on the cutting edge of a technology that can reduce the risk of stroke in patients with AFib. Tell us about that. Sure. So most patients with atrial fibrillation are anticoagulated with blood thinners. And then we determine who should be on the blood thinner is based on something called the chads vas score. And it's a series of um, uh, risk factors that put people at risk for stroke. And for men, you have to have two or more of these risk factors to be on the blood thinner. And for women, it's three. Uh, some of these medications that you might have heard of include warfarin or coumadin, uh, apixaban, which is otherwise known as Eliquis, uh, rivaroxaban, otherwise known as Xeralto, and Debogatran, otherwise known as Pradaxo. All right, tell us about who is a candidate for something called Watchmen. So some of the patients who cannot be safely anticoagulated with the medication that I described due to bleeding issues such as GI bleeding, uh, prehistory of intracranial bleeding or bleeding in the brain. Um, sometimes people have decreased blood clouds because of some sort of cancer or therapy that they're on. Uh, and sometimes people have interaction with this medication. So while we want to decrease the risk of stroke, these patients cannot be anticoagulated because of those issues. Those would be the patients that we would typically want to uh, consider them for a left atrial appendage closure device, such as the Watchman device. All right, we want to talk about the benefits of Watchman, and we also have a picture of the device. We are going to show the audience while you talk about the benefit. Look at that, it's so small. How does that work? So it's, um, it's a very nice device, and actually the, um, we have a newer version of it. It's called the Watchman Flex, which is now even safer than the previous version. However, so in patients with atrial fibrillation, there's a uh, component to the upper chamber, the left atrial called the left atrial appendage, that is responsible for greater than 90% of the strokes in patients with AFib. So the Watchman device is a device that we implant into the left atrial appendage, uh, and the patients will stay on the blood thinner for a short period of time, for 45 days, and then once uh, once we do some further imaging and make sure that the uh, that uh, Watchman device is completely endothelialized, we can then safely take these patients off the blood thinners. Therefore, we then decrease their risk of stroke and at the same time, decrease the risk of bleeding for these patients. All right, doctor, thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me.